Three, two, one. Hey. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and berries, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and uh, this is a new thing that I've got going. Aside from the business end of things, we're getting into more of the magical and the mystical, and I've got a new friend on. His name is Brett, and the last name is Shaw. Are you there, Brett? Yes, sir. How are you? Hey, I am well, and so are you. Those are the rules. <laughs> what, what part of the world are you in? What part of the rules? Stay well. <laughs> no, where, where, where do you live oh, in? Part, part of the world. I'm actually in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Arkansas. I've never, yes, I've never been to Arkansas. It's beautiful, man. It is beautiful. Now, people are kind of weird, but it's beautiful. <laughs> well, we, we spent a couple of years down in Asheville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And That's it's, nice it's a different, uh, it's a different vibe down there in the South. I'm in the Midwest in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. And, uh, it's, it's, it's different down there. Right. You know, the, the, they put with the brights on here. I don't think they can see very well, no matter where they are. If they're behind you, <laughs> coming at you in the city they drive with their brights on i think they can't they have a problem <laughs> that can make, that can make exactly. a problem. very cool well the topic we're going to talk about is the magic industry and find a little bit more about what you've been doing with the magic world i've been doing magic pretty much all my life it's uh my, my quick story is i graduated high school in 1975 but i did magic all the way as a little kid from like four or five and i was actually making money doing it but then I graduated and people said, get a job. So I did get a job and I worked about three years, got laid off and I thought, That's, where's my gold watch? And I decided just to be a full-time magician. So I did it full-time through the 70s, 80s and 90s. And uh, it's a fun position. <laughs> it is, it's very fun. When did you get started? I got started late. I probably got started 1994 area. I was already in my late 20s when I got started. I was always intrigued by magic, but you know, I was always taught it was uh, taboo and it was wrong and it was evil and it was oh, tapping into the spiritual world. Come to find out, it's nothing but a bunch of tricks and you know, illusions and stuff. And as soon as I found that out, man, I was hooked like a, like a kid on candy. You know, there's a friend of mine, uh, Toby Travis. You know mm -hmm. that name? Yes, I do know him. Yeah, I opened for him for a while and drove his truck, and uh, that's uh, his whole thing was the whole Christian ministry thing. And we talked about that kind of thing where you got to know if someone's fooling you and the, the art of deception and all that. Uh, right, right. It was cool. They did a different spin on it. So I think it look, you can look at it two ways. You know, people can go down the wrong path thinking that all this woo woo stuff is, is what it is, but um, it's entertainment. And I think it's a cool thing that a person can expand their mind with magic. Because with magic, you can do anything. The limits right. are, it's limitless and it's global. Correct. It's like music. I mean, music reaches all kinds of people. Yeah. You know? exactly. And magic is a way to convey fun, entertainment, a message if you want, you know, mm -hmm. or a bad message, depending on how you want to go about it. You know, so. It is. So it's not the magic that is the evil thing. It's the person, the person behind the magic, maybe a Correct. little deceptive and- Exactly, that. exactly. It took me a bit to figure that out. And once I did figure it out, I was like, hey, I love doing it, so. And well, it's it. a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, I've got some friends that, uh, you know, from here that use magic. Like you, you remember uh, the Jaw Droppers series? Yes. That, I worked with Larry Anderson on that. And okay. he started doing magic up here and he got hooked up with Mark Wilson that got him out into Hollywood. And then he started being an actor and he got into, you know, he was, he was on the $6 million man and uh, Bill Bixby, the magician, he would worked on the Lucy show. So he, he got a very good career in acting because of his magic. It was sort of a stepping stone. So I think it's very helpful. Yeah. A few other people have done that as well, you know, have used their magic as a way to get into acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, uh, you, you, it ends up you being used in like, uh, like salespeople. They learn a few tricks. It gets their foot in the door, so to speak, or speakers mm -hmm. use magic to kind of use it as a message in their keynote presentation. I've done that a lot yeah. of, you know, speaking, using magic and illusion, whether it's for high school students all the way up to, you know, or corporate entities that need to have a message conveyed. And magic is a good way to just get the point across. It captures their mind, catches, and it gets them to thinking what in the direction you want them to think you know mm -hmm. so you have a sales group of sales people and you want to show 
how to capture an audience or how to convey a message, do a few tricks within that message and make sure that trick impacts them and it works very well. And again, that's the cool thing about the magic is you can do anything with it. I was hired once to, uh, to, to break up the mindset of a mastermind group, you know, give them some new thinking Mm -hmm. because you know you look at two different things you can either do it this way or that way because of the duality thinking of our brains so let's see the coin was either heads or it was tails and these this team was saying yeah well that's the only options and i flipped it up and landed and it landed on its edge i said no there's other options you would expand your mind you know? exactly yeah there's cool things that you can do with that what, what kind of stuff do you do do you do primarily close-up or primary illusions or combination I of do, both? I, I do it all basically i kind of like a a jack of all trades, master of none. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I do close-up strolling magic as well, mentalism, uh, stage shows, comedy, and I used to do full-blown illusion shows, mm -hmm. but that's when I had a team, you know, team, you because know, it takes it takes uh, quite a few people to help you pull off a good illusion show, you know, that's timed right, it's choreographed right, and all oh, that. Yeah. And you know, I had I think the maximum amount of people I had on my team one time was eleven people, and that was cutting it tight. A lot know, of people. Everybody had their specific job and there was no time for goof off until after everything was broke broke down packed up and we we're ready to go back to the motel and good. celebrate that we had a good time you know so. a lot of people don't realize what's going on behind the curtain there's a lot of work that's being going going on there when it looks so smooth in front and then it's happening behind right um, we had a similar uh, group there was me and a, a friend that i grew up with we used uh, two doves and or, or ten doves two rabbits and two girls and as we got older, you know, the girls got boyfriends and then you try and schedule. So I can't imagine how you're working with a, a bigger crew of nine trying to keep them all on the same page. Right. It was very hard because then they started growing up too, going to college, going into the Air Force or military or whatever. So my group of 11 went down to 10 and it went down to nine and then down to five and then four and then three and then me. <laughs> so it just kind of... And you, you had learned to adapt to each thing. We had, we got to where we could do a two hour stage show. We could set it up in about 45 minutes to an hour, have it set up, ready to roll. We roll mm -hmm. into town, boom, set it up. And then we'd have it tear, tore down within an hour, an hour and a half, you know, depending on what, what was going on. And uh, everything was timed. Everything was set just right. And uh, tell you what, if I was young, I'd do it all over again, you know? That's right. <laughs> You get older, you get smarter. You don't want to have do, a big. Do you know the name Jay Owinghouse? No, I don't. Okay, he's a, he's way on the opposite side of where you are. He's up in the like northwest area, but uh, he had a real cool format because he did a lot of schools and he tied it in with like the Dare, the Drug Awareness Program, mm -hmm. and everything happened in a school. And in a school gymnasium, it's basically a standard size. It's you know basketball courts, right? Mm -hmm. So that was standardized, and then he had a big tarp that he'd lay out. It was already blocked for all the illusions. So you just lay it all out and everything's all laid out where the speakers go, where the lights go, where the stage the effect, the illusions go. It was a pretty smooth little thing. He had it all pre-done on his little tarp. And that way it doesn't damage the floor. When you're done with all the confetti and all that, just you know, fold it all up and get it out of the way. It's real, That's real smart. quick. That's very brilliant. Yeah. And you gotta we, uh, do that. Well, yeah, and you gotta have your people and I got to a point where I had to train people on the spot. When I went overseas, they couldn't afford, well, we can't bring your assistants. We can't do this. Well, I, if you want the whole show, you need to bring everybody. Well, can you scale it down? Yeah, I can scale it down. Uh, can you bring your birds? No, I can't bring my birds because it costs $150 each to get a shot at the time, you know? So 11, you know, you said you used 11 doves. Imagine that price <laughs> right there. So, <laughs> at first I used 11, then I went down to four, where it was basically I had two body loads and two box loads, I guess you'd call them. Uh, and uh, no, give me doves. And I said, I want young doves and I don't want any older ones. I want young ones. And 30 minutes before the show, I'd start playing around with them. And it was almost like they'd been in the show 10 years after I got ready to use them. They were that easy to train. Well, that's you part know? of the reason I want to do this show to show the people mm -hmm. that there's a lot more to the magic than what they see from the outside. I, I'm not going to do any revelations of magic. I think that when I see that stuff, it, uh, it bothers me a little because it um, mm -hmm. it takes the magic out of the magic. And there's people like my wife that like the magic, 
and then when they see how it works, it's it deflates it. <laughs> Disappointing. Yes. And, uh, it, it's almost like giving someone a gift without wrapping it or or telling some kid that that's not Santa Claus, that's some other man dressed in a costume. It right. It takes it all right. out. Mm -hmm. So I wish people would quit exposing it. It's a, with, with magic, it's different than a lot of other arts where you, you can't see the work. You know, everything as simple as reaching up the air and grabbing a dove and putting it in this box and it disappears. It, it looks so easy, but there's right. a lot of work that goes into making it look like it's just normal. Right. A lot of practice, a lot of, a lot of uh, just working the whole routine, because if you don't work it right, there's, a, there's bound to be some kind of mistake, even if you got it perfected. There might well, be a mistake, and how are you going to deal with that? You know, I was so. helping a friend of mine uh, has a show in Eureka Springs, uh, Sean Paul, mm -hmm. an intrigue theater. And um, we had a situation set up where they played a video on a, on a backlit screen, or, or a regular screen. It was a regular screen projected from the back of the room. And then he thought we should uh, project it from the you know, backstage and project it onto a, onto a projector screen. But he didn't think that now you've got a light that is in the backstage. You can't do any setting or things in backstage because you have to walk through the, screen, the light. Right. <laughs> so all of a sudden you just change one little thing. It affects everything else. And I think, right. I think people would respect magic more if they realize how much work actually went into putting a show together with the, all the the practice of the magic to make it look like it's magical i think the best way to explain it would be like putting on a good theatrical drama mm -hmm. you got everybody playing their role in the play they got to memorize the scripts you got to cue the music everything the costumes got to be just right and your changing of the scenery is usually done in front of you but in magic is done. It's not. It's done behind the scenes. Right. You know, so if they can think of it that way, then they'll say, wow, there's a lot going on to this drama. These kids really put our adults put a lot of time into this. Well, same way with the magician. Just doesn't walk up with a bag of tricks and say, ta-da, here I am. <laughs> it's years of work, you know, on some routines. And so, so, it, so what markets do you work? Do you work like the college circuit or theater or you work corporate? I work, I work, uh, I work college. I work high schools. I do the proms, you know, sometimes I'll do the proms. I do a lot of motivational speaking to those high school students that are involved in FCCLA, you know, the, the future kids of America, whatever you want to call it. Um, I do that as well. And then do a lot of corporate and private events as well. Um, so it varies. I used to do like, you know, fundraising family shows and stuff like that. But back then when I was doing, I didn't know quite how to market it to where they made good money and I made money too. Now I've done some studies, so I know how to do it, but I just haven't got out there and can't do it now because of COVID, you know? So yeah. anyway, so that's where I, that's, it's kind of in those general areas, you know, uh, high schools were always fun, you know, especially, you know, the kids and stuff like that, but, and the proms, they were great, but man, you were locked in all night sometimes, you know, you go in, in the middle of the night and you're with those kids, right. like now, what, <laughs> you know, you're done with your show. You just kind of sit around, you know, you don't want to mingle too much with them, you know? Right. Three o'clock in the morning, right? Yes, man, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I remember that. Uh, I haven't uh, been performing much. I'm pretty much semi-retired, but I remember those days driving home at three o'clock in the morning. And mm -hmm. you're, you're, for a few months there, your whole world is flipped upside down where you're... <laughs> you're I remember nice. doing one show uh, for a school, and then after I was done and everything, the teacher came, oh, can you do the announcements? Uh, can you do the auction? Can you do this? I was there till about six o'clock the next morning. We had been up a little bit already, you know, loaded in. And you can't just walk away from your equipment. Once you load it in and set it up on that stage area, you got all these high school st students that are just like, what's that? <laughs> Look, a microphone. <laughs> <Can I play laughs> <with that? laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize that too. Like uh, it happens a lot in like the comedy club circuit where the comics start playing with your props, thinking that it's funny. Yeah. You don't realize that you, know, you could touch the table and set everything off? Oh, yeah. Kirby Van Birch had that problem in Branson when he went to his final setup. Uh, people were messing with his soundboard, messing with his props. And boy, he thought someone was doing it on purpose. But anyways, it's just the comedy people coming through and, oh, wow, what's this? You know, so they set it somewhere else and he'd get on stage and start looking for his prop. And he's like, okay, where'd it go? So, yeah, he had issues with that. But... 
Yeah, that's one of the things that fascinates me about magic is how different it is than the other um, art forms. Mm -hmm. where, where, like again, like I said earlier, the the work that's put into it is what you don't see. Mm -hmm. And the other things like, you know, dance or juggling and things like that. Um, with magic, you can't make a mistake because it's... <laughs> It's exposed. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not very magical anymore. And if you do make a mistake, what do you do about it? How do you handle it? How do you get your audience to read everything's okay or it was part of the game or whatever, you know? So mm -hmm. that comes with time and effort too as well because my early ages, they could read my face and oh, he's pissed off about something. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like you, you just don't show them anymore. You know, you just ad-lib it, move forward. So but yeah, magic... Speaking of that, I had an assistant overseas that I was training and I just gave her specific instructions. Do not play with the props. When I ask for this prop, bring it to me. And I'm upstage doing something and I hear this crack. She took one of my appearing canes and messed with it and actually broke it. Oh. She didn't know what she was doing. She's trying to, you know, I don't it's want to expose the secret, but broke it. So I couldn't use it for one of my routines. So I had to ax out that whole set of 15 minutes worth of entertainment and come up with something different. So yeah, it can mess you up. Yeah, you gotta think on your feet with all that kind of stuff. I know mm -hmm. I did a, a thing with um, a local magician here, Dan Witkowski, he produces events, um, did the Super Bowl halftime shows and things like that. And we did a, a deal with a floating ball and uh, there was a bunch of dancers that had to come out. Well, there's situations with the floating ball that the dancers can't really be there because they'd, they'd ruin it. Exactly. And someone yeah. ended up cueing the dancers too early. They came out and they ruined it. And what are you going to do? You can't do that routine. <laughs> yeah, right. you got to move on. Oops. But that, that's what makes hey, it fun. Maybe float one of the dancers next time. <laughs> yeah, float them right out the window. Exactly. Yeah, there's a, I had another thought and I forgot what the heck it was. Isn't that weird how, how things come into your brain and all of a sudden they disappear just like magic? <laughs> that, that's called a, a brain fart. You know what it is? Yeah, Down there, that's what you call it? You can't call it an early moment because, you know, we're kind of that at that age. <laughs> that's right. A senior, a senior moment, moment, I guess. But yeah, a blonde moment or brain fart. Yeah. I just forgot. <laughs> but the, that might be an interesting topic to, to, with this series i plan on doing a lot of these different shows and it might be interesting to come up with some kind of series um of like bloopers or experiences i thought about doing a book like that that'd be great all for the mission. different uh, yeah. situations that have happened you know there's so many different i'm sure you've got stories on stories of uh things that happen like uh i did a flash pot thing once where the smoke went up and all of a sudden the fire alarm goes off and you're in a hotel, what are you gonna do? Everything's shut down, the fire department comes. Mm -hmm. It screwed up everything, but I just wasn't thinking. I was saying, I was doing a high school event, right? Like you're talking about the kid, that guy that did the D.A.R.E. programs, it did something mm -hmm. similar to the anti-gang and drug programs. But then it was a night show where we're doing the big full illusion show. And I made sure I cleared it. I said, I got a very heavy duty fog machine. Will it set off your alarms? No, you're fine, use it. So, you know, pre-show pre music's playing 15 minutes before I start filling up the backstage with the fog because, I, you know, I have an appearance I'm doing. Five minutes, so people already are in their seats, ready to roll, about to open up the curtains, the alarm goes off. So guess what? We had to exit everybody out. And I'm trying to tell them, folks, this is not part of the show, right? This is not supposed to happen. It is a false alarm. Please stay in your seat. No security came says, you guys got to exit. So everybody's out there waiting. So it kind of blew that opening effect, but still, yeah, <laughs> alarms going off. That's well, very similar thing. That's kind of what happened. That's a, right. exactly what happened to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I got some good stories. I mean, on the bloopers, but that's uh, I remember one time doing a Dakota chair vanish, you know, person vanish off a stage and did mm -hmm. it for like a, a band set up. They had the band center stage. And then on to the left was an, another setup, just like their risers. So if you can imagine what I'm talking about, same type setup, I built the, the vanishing setup. We did it. Person thought we were done and thought the curtain was done. They come up through the, the oh. stage. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Everybody's go. 
they saw exactly how the trick was done. It was see, see now if something is done like that by mistake and it's yeah. exposed, I guess I'm not that that that's a mistake. But when people are actually exposing the stuff just On for purpose, the exposure's yeah. sake, I don't like that. Right. Anyways. Well, Brett, I don't like to do these too long because time is a commodity, you know, and yes, you know, a lot of it, but I'd love to do some more of these as we go. And uh, as I get them more organized, they'll, like I said, have different little uh, tracks or divisions and things on certain topics. Okay. I'd love to have, uh, have more, more conversations like this. Well, so, anything I can help you with, let me know. I'll be, I'll be glad to. Uh, well, absolutely. And uh, if I can help promote you in any ways, we'll get that done too. My background is the marketing element of things. And that's kind of what this is about, letting people know and make more magic in this world. So, Right. Well, let's talk so, about the marketing when you, uh, when you have time. So. I'm going to sign this off. If you want to stay on, um, we'll have a little chat after this. Other than that, I'm going to close this one off. And uh, so thank you very much. Appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you. Thank you.